All right, now that we have learned a little bit about matter, uh, we learned the states of matter. So how much energy is in them determines the state that it finds itself in. And then also how to classify matter. To, and using all those vocabulary terms, hopefully you've taken the time to do the practice that goes with that so that we can move forward. And so we're still studying matter, okay? Uh, and everything is matter. Okay, now we're going to look at some properties of matter and when we change matter and the different ways that we can change it, okay? All right, so let's look at extensive versus intensive properties of matter. Extensive property, it starts with that prefix ex, ex, okay, which means to exit or the outer. So this is a property that is outside of the identity of the matter, okay? So it depends on the amount of matter that is present, okay? It depends on how much is there versus an intensive property. This is prefix in, it's internal to the identity, Okay, so this depends on the identity of the substance. It doesn't matter if there's a whole bunch of it or a little bit of it. What matters is what it is, while extensive is external. It depends on the amount, not what it is. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Okay, boiling point. So you guys think about what you think the answer is. Is it extensive or intensive before I tell you? So boiling point, this is what temperature does it begin to boil? Do you think that is extensive or intensive? Does it matter about how much it is or what it is? Boiling point is intensive. It matters what it is. Water has a different boiling point than alcohol, okay? It takes a lot more heat to boil water than it does to boil alcohol, for example. Okay, what about volume? Is volume extensive or intensive? Volume is extensive because volume depends on how much of it you have. Okay, what about mass? That's also extensive. Depends on how much you have, what its mass is. How about density? Remember our density equation is mass divided by volume. Is density intensive or extensive? That is intensive, okay? The density, the mass per volume depends on the identity of the substance. Think about um, holding a piece of lead and holding a feather, right? That lead feels much heavier because it, it's denser. Its atoms are packed much more closely and tightly together than that feather. Okay, what about conductivity? That means how well it transfers electricity through it. Is that intensive or extensive? That one is intensive, it depends on it. Uh, metals, highly conductive, transport electricity very well. Uh, plastics, don't transfer, they're not very conductive. Okay, all right, now let's talk about physical versus chemical properties of matter. A physical property is anything that can be observed without changing the identity of the substance. Okay, so you can observe it, you can manipulate it, but the substance still remains the same. That is a physical property. Versus a chemical property. A chemical property is the ability of a substance to undergo changes to its identity. Okay, so if you are able to change its identity, that is an example of a chemical property. Okay, let's look at some specific examples. Okay, melting point. What do you think this one is? Just what do you think, physical or chemical? Melting point is the temperature at which an object melts. That is physical, okay? So changing the state doesn't change the identity, okay? If you freeze water and turn it into solid water, it's still water, it's just solid versus liquid water, okay? So same thing. So melting, any of those changes in state are physical. You're not changing the identity, you're just changing the appearance. Okay, what about flammable? If you are able to 
burn something or not. That is chemical because when you burn an item, you actually change its identity uh, because the fire can actually separate out um, those atoms and elements. Okay, how about density? Density, mass per volume. Okay, that one is a physical property. It's a physical property. You can measure something's density and you don't change its identity in doing so. How about whether something is magnetic or not? Will a magnet stick to it or not? That is a physical. And when you stick a magnet to your refrigerator, your refrigerator is still a refrigerator, right? It has not changed into something else. What about if something can tarnish or not? So like silver, for example, tarnishes when it sits out for a long period of time. Do you think that is physical or chemical? That is a chemical change. Tarnish is actually changing the chemical, uh, changing the properties of that item. Okay, so the physical properties and the chemical properties go right into changes. A physical change is something that changes the form of a substance without changing its identity. So melting something, boiling something, freezing something, the identity stays the same. Uh, the water is still water, whether it's steam or it's liquid water or it's ice water, it's still the same. So a physical change is changing the form without changing its identity. Chemical changes actually change the identity. Um, the products are different after this change. Okay. How do you know if a chemical change has occurred? So what do you look for? You can look for a change in the color or the odor. So silver, when it tarnishes, it's actually a different color. And when you go to shine your silver to get rid of that varnish, what you're actually doing is you're taking off a layer and getting to a, another layer of the silver and exposing it because that outer layer has changed into something else now. Okay, so you can look for a change in color, change in odor. Uh, you can look for the formation of a gas. If you mix two liquids together and all of a sudden it's gas starts coming out, you have created a chemical change. You can look for the formation of a precipitate. That's a good vocabulary word, precipitate. That's a science word for a solid. Okay, so if you mix together two liquids and a solid falls out, it precipitates out into the bottom of, say, a test tube, uh, so you've created a solid, you've made a chemical change happen. And you can also look for a change in light or heat. So if you mix two liquids together and they get really, really hot, you've created a chemical change. Let's look at some examples. All right, so for each of these, you take your guess before I answer. Do you think it is a physical change or do you think it is a chemical change? When iron rusts, that is chemical. Uh, oxygen in the air is actually interacting with the iron and causing a chemical change. What about if you dissolve something in water? That one is physical. Okay, so um, if you dissolve salt in water, make some salt water, that is a physical change. The salt is still in the water, it's just dissolved. You can boil out the water and get the salt back in the exact same way. Okay, so just a physical change. What about burning a log? That one is chemical, right? Because the log goes from being a piece of wood to being smoke and ash. So it changes its identity. Melting ice, you guys should have been able to get that one easily. Physical, right? Melting ice, it's still water, it's just changed forms. And how about when you grind up spices? That one is physical, okay? When you grind up the spices, um, they're still the same spice, they still taste the same, they still have the same properties, you've just cut them basically into smaller pieces. Nice job.